Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, November 17. Cabinet has approved the appointment of new boards to manage the University Hospital of the West Indies and the Western Regional Health Authority. The board of the University Hospital will be chaired by businessman James Moss Solomon and will initially include business personnel, a lawyer, banker and individuals from the medical profession. Ex officio members include the Vice Chancellor, Bursar and Dean of the Faculty of Medicine at the UWI, the Chief Medical Officer, the Financial Secretary and Chairman of the Medical Committee of the Hospital. The new board for the Western Regional Health Authority, of which the Cornwall Regional Hospital is a part, will be chaired by hotelier Tony Hart. Other members include business personnel, a farmer, representatives from parish councils, medical personnel, health practitioners and members of the clergy. Ex officio members include the Regional Director, Senior Medical Officer and Chief Executive Officer of the Cornwall Regional Hospital. The new board members of the University Hospital of the West Indies and the Western Regional Health Authority officially took up duties today and will serve for three years. Cabinet has given the two boards latitude to appoint any individual with the requisite skills to advance their mandate. A 200 million US dollar investment is in the pipeline for the construction of two hotels in Trelawney. The first is a five-star hotel scheduled to be opened by the end of 2018. The second hotel, another five-star all-inclusive, will be an adult-only resort with 375 sea view rooms. Both investments should add approximately 1,000 new jobs to the Jamaican economy. The two hotels will be built by Spanish and Jamaican businessmen Carlos Malone and Frederick Moe, who have joined forces with Ocean by H10 Hotels, a Spanish resort chain. H10 believes that the Jamaican government has done a great job uh, with the reforms towards bringing foreign investments and that's why H10 has decided to heavily invest in Jamaica. In October, international hotel chain Charisma Hotels and Resorts announced a 900 million US dollar investment in Jamaica's tourism sector. That's expected to add 4,000 additional rooms over the next decade. Work has commenced on the Boscobel Wastewater Treatment Plant in St. Mary following a groundbreaking ceremony recently. Construction of the new facility should last for 12 months and will cost over 2 million US dollars. The treatment plan should reduce the contamination of groundwater to meet the standards stipulated by the National Environment and Planning Agency. It will also improve the level of service to customers of the National Water Commission. The new treatment facility that we are breaking ground for today will have a capacity of 600 cubic meters per day. We will also make provision for the expansion of the new plant in phase two of the project, which in the future will be able to treat an additional 600 cubic meters per day. The original Boscobel wastewater treatment plant was designed to treat wastewater for 40 housing units and can handle some 50 cubic meters of wastewater per day. However, the system is now overloaded as it receives sewage flows from over 200 housing units. Jamaica's new political ombudsman has been urged to lift the tone and quality of debates among political parties even as she acts as a mediator for various challenges. Donna Parchment Brown was sworn in on Monday by Governor-General Sir Patrick Allen during a ceremony at King's House. Sir Patrick indicated that Mrs. Parchment Brown would ensure that political parties adhere to established codes of conduct. She will also monitor activities which, will, which constitute or are likely to constitute a breach of any agreement, code or arrangement between or among political parties. In Jamaica. The new political ombudsman says she's willing to work with key stakeholders in the execution of her duties. I stand ready to be an advocate, mediator and arbitrator for safe conduct of Jamaica's elections and to promote as far as possible the respectful, positive presentation of the candidates to Jamaica. Prior to her appointment as political ombudsman, Mrs. Parchment Brown served as the Custos Rotolorum for St. Andrew. She's a dispute resolution specialist who was called to the bar more than 33 years ago and has served in both the private and public sectors. Government is empowering Jamaicans to take up jobs in the information and communications technology ICT sector through the opening of a community access point cap site in Portmore, St. Catherine. The facility is located at the Innovative Learning Center at the Truth Tabernacle United Pentecostal Church in Cumberland. The Universal Service Fund spent about $3 million to outfit the center with 12 computers, two printers, a server, network system and a projector. Two additional computers were donated by the Grace Kennedy Foundation. 
Portfolio Minister Philip Paulwell says the CAP site will help to provide training for those wishing to take up jobs in the ICT sector. You now this flood to come to Jamaica, Xerox, their aim is to create 10,000 jobs in Jamaica and there are about 7,000. Sutherland, another large company, they have started, they have gone about 3,000 jobs. They want to get to 10,000 jobs. We have to create the space. And finally, as the country celebrates Food Safety Week, there is a call for greater awareness of food safety to promote health and wealth. Food Safety Week, which ends on November 21, is being observed under the theme Safe Foods from Production to Consumption, the Gateway to Health and Wealth. The National Agricultural Health and Food Safety Coordinating Committee is spearheading the week-long activities. On Wednesday, members of the public can participate in a food symposium at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. Farmers, as well as those in the cottage industry, can also participate in a training and certification program on Thursday. It will be held at the Jewels Duns River Beach Resort and Spa in St. Anne from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And they will be trained in GAP, General Good Agricultural Practices, GMP, they will also be getting training on HACCP, traceability and documentation, as well as packaging and labeling, and also will be introduced to international regulations at this training. Certificates will be provided for all persons who attend. Ms. Morrison was speaking at a recent JIS think tank. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching.